Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 470 for Tuesday, the 20th of September 2016. Nice to see you. Hey, I'm Robbie Ferguson. Please help me welcome Shelly De Silva. Hey, guys. Tonight, we've got an amazing show for you. We are going to learn how to batch convert raw images into JPEG or PNG. I'm going to tell you why you might want to do that. We're going to use a Linux terminal window in order to do it. So stick around, all you geeks. It's going to be fun. Uh, we're also going to look at a USB cable that simply cannot be beat. It cannot oh. be broken. It cannot be chewed or otherwise destroyed. You want to stick around. I'm going to show you the ultimate Titan USB cable. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. The launch of the date of the new Star Trek TV show has been announced. <laughs> and we'll have the info for you. Coming up. <laughs> 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 You'll get through. <laughs> First time on the teleprompter, folks. It's a time and you phone. and you and you don't even have a microphone on your ear. How did that fall off? I don't know. T-Mobile is urgently warning they know. iPhone users not to upgrade to <laughs> iOS 10. It's fallen off. Oh, no. <laughs> Remember just before the show when I, I said everybody <laughs> ready? Everybody ready? That was you included. I laughed and it fell right oh, off. Oh my goodness. Okay. Here, you keep you keep talking there. I think you've you've got oh, it too no. taut at the back. That's what it was. So when you moved your head it it actually pulled it right oh, off your ear. Okay. So you're saying something about T Mobile? <laughs> <laughs> yes. How do I get her back? You can't. Okay. Just moving Window along. Hack. Window lets a hacker gain access to your network and Microsoft will likely not be fixing it. For the first time ever, a video game YouTuber has been charged for promoting in game gambling. And someone has built the first tiniest MAME cabinet in the galaxy. Stick around. The full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Hi, I'm Shelly Silva. Shelly, how you been? It's been Good. a while since you've been here. Busy yes. summer. Oh, yeah. You've full. been doing right. a lot of traveling and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. What have you been up to? Uh, I went out to a camp out in Winnipeg, so that was fun. Winnipeg, so. Manitoba. Mm -hmm. Do we have some viewers from Manitoba? Hello! Apparently it's only like four hours from Ontario, so apparently it's not legit Winnipeg, but... Is it really that close? Yeah. No. Yeah, that's what Jen said. So. No. Yep. You, there must be like a, like a direct path to Winnipeg. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> I had to fly there, so and I'm it, sure it to be And to be fair, Jen uh, is traveling at about 180 kilometers an hour. <laughs> <laughs> what else? You've been keeping well? Mm -hmm. Anything new? Um, nothing too much. I got sick a couple weeks ago, so just yeah. getting over that. But good, good. You've been you're you're once again the category five celebrity. Um, you've done a couple more shows with New Every yeah. Day. That was cool. Yeah, that was fun. So it was nice seeing you over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, we went on a good old road trip. So and where'd was... you go? What'd you do? Uh, we went to see the Six Great Lakes of uh, Ontario. Six. In, uh, yeah. How do you in count 24 six? 24 hours, but 16 hours. Oh, okay. We did finish them in 16 hours, but to get back home, it took 24. It's exactly. like, there's five great lakes, but we'll also include this lake, and we'll call it great because it's awesome. St. Clair? Is that a great lake? Like, <sighs> like actually? Yeah. We'll have to Wikipedia that. Yeah. I, but that's cool. Six great lakes, and you got, did lakes. you swim them, or did you? Yeah. We all went in, uh, took a dip. And then in one day. Up. Who did all the driving? Uh, Carrie, mostly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you remember Carrie Webb from seasons one and two? So, funny story. She laid her head down for like a good two minutes, woke back up, and never slept back again. She stayed awake for almost 24 hours, which is... That's nuts. I know. But she's a nurse, so I guess it kind of helps out with... So that was mm -hmm. laid back, staying awake for out. her, I guess. Jet lagged. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd be <laughs> out completely. Uh, our torrent server is up. If you want to go over to torrent.category5.tv and download the show, of course, tonight, Shelly, is uh, the season finale of season nine. So that means this coming week, you're going to be able to find all of season nine by BitTorrent at torrent.category5.tv. Thanks to everyone who's seeding that for us. Um, let's get into a little information about what's happening next week. Okay, yeah. Of course, this being the end of Season 9, Season 10 launches next Tuesday night. Uh, as you know, Category 5 Technology TV is moving to Wednesday nights for Season 10. And so that takes place not until October 5th. 
However, our uh, so our pilot episode for season ten, which is next week, is still happening on a Tuesday night. Um, so we're going to be kicking off season ten with a special two-hour episode, and we are going to be filming it in 360 video. We were originally hoping to do a broadcast live in 360 view. Mm-hmm. Um, and the VR technology just isn't quite there yet. So uh, we're working with a couple of companies that are going to be bringing some new hardware into the studio to make it happen. Uh, but right now, uh, what we're going to be doing is actually recording in 360, but we're going to be broadcasting just as you're seeing this episode here. Okay. So the live view uh, will be like this, uh, but the after on demand is going to be full 360 view. That's where you can actually participate right. uh, by looking around. And mm-hmm. that brings me to our top seller this week because everyone's gearing up for it. Shelly, you remember looking at happy shades. goggles. These are like super happy goggles. Are a different level. These are like to the top, to the max of 360 video. So you stick your phone in here, mm-hmm. uh, up to six inch phone, and, uh, and then it gives you VR. Mm-hmm. So pretty awesome. If you've got an accelerometer in your phone, which most of the new ones do, you're going to be able to participate not only in VR games and things like that, but also in next week's episode in 360 cool. view. That's going to be amazing. Um, so we're going to we're going to absolutely make that the best that we can. Uh, we'd ask that you please have Skype ready to go with Skype video because we are going to be calling on you, our wonderful viewers, to give us a quick call on the Category 5 Skype call number ID. It's simply (laughs) category5.tv. So you're going to call us up on Skype and do a video conference call with us. And those who are on Patreon are probably able to see um, the, the view screen over here right now in 360 view. Um, so you'll actually be able to look around in 360 view. You'll be able to see the screen where you will be when you're Skyping in and then look around to us oh, and carry the conversation. It's going to be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So make sure you got Skype video ready for it and uh, be prepared to call up, share your, your favorite memories of Category 5 TV. I mean, we've been doing this for nine years. So here we go. It's an exciting time, and I'm really excited to be kicking off Season 10 mm-hmm. in such a cool way. And uh, We've got some really cool companies helping us to make that happen. Uh, last week, we looked at, uh, well, we had a poll, and we're looking at how we want to um, structure Season 10 as far as the, the I guess, the, the Robbie geek meter goes with regards to my tutorials. So the question that we're polling our viewers about, and this is what I want you to participate in, Mm -hmm. is whether you would like our tutorials to be really sophisticated, really under the hood, like let's get into the terminal and learn exactly how this works. Very detailed. Very detailed, but also like let's build it. Let's do it from scratch versus... Option B would be, hey, it's already kind of ready to go. Let's learn how to deploy it Mm -hmm. in a fast, easy to deploy manner. A good example would be, uh, I I use the Raspberry Pi as a good example. Mm -hmm. So we could show you how to install the OS on the flashcard, how to install the software, how to get it up and running, how to configure it, how to get it up and going. Or we could do all that and then create an an image file that you could just download and install. And then we can focus the, um, the review more on how to use it. So the question is there. If you're on YouTube, make sure you click on the poll up there. And uh, that's just over your head there, Shell. Oh, so okay. click on that, and, uh, and then you'll be able to cast your vote so that we know how you would like to direct Category 5 Technology TV uh, Season 10. Mm-hmm. Shelly, we've got to take a really quick break. When we come back, we are going to be looking at Titan USB cables from Fuse Chicken. They are the toughest USB cables nice. in the world. If you're hard on your gear, you want to pick some of these up. Uh, also, later in the show tonight, we're going to be learning how to convert raw images into JPEG and PNG in a batch file format, uh, or in a batch way, mm-hmm. using the Linux terminal. So you want to stick around. Don't go anywhere. Now here's another great way you can support the shows you love from the Category5.tv network by shopping at GearBest. That's right, Jeff. Uh, Cat5.tv slash GearBest. It's an online store for the geek streak in you. Or the loved ones. Well, of course. I mean, especially your loved ones, right? Uh, Because Cat5.tv slash GearBest, quite frankly, has all of the greatest tech gifts that you could ever hope for at rock bottom prices. Do they have cell phones? You betcha. Cat5.tv slash GearBest has a wide assortment of unlocked Android cell phones and tablets. What about compute? Uh 
consumer electronics. Those make a great gift. Absolutely. From high-tech watches to action cameras, headphones, even virtual reality headsets. Cat5.tv slash GearBest has you covered. They literally have it all, Jeff. Literally. Really. It's like a superstore right from the comfort of your own chair at your computer through the interweb. Yeah. I, there's no way they have it all. It's true. It's just a bunch of ele- uh, random electronics. Test me. Um, what about clothes? Yep. Both men and women, fashionable apparel at rock bottom, super duper prices. Kind of like this. Well, look at this coat. What do you think? It's a slimming mock leather jacket. I love it. It's available for less than $30 plus free shipping at cap5.tv slash gear best. All right. You kind of got me there. Wow. Any other questions for me, Jeff? Uh, now that the winter has passed, flying season. Do they have any good deals on, say, drone copters? Oh, my goodness. Well, check this out. Dude, they have everything. Check out over 500 various drones. And not only that, they're available marked down by about 30 to up to 63% off the regular price. Love it. What's the website again? Well, you're going to find GearBest on our partners' pages for any of your favorite Category 5 TV shows like New Every Day, Category 5 Technology TV, The Pixel Shadow. Uh, But of course, if you want to shop absolutely right now and you want to go straight to the site, all you have to do is visit cat5.tv slash GearBest. See, that's easy. Cat5.tv slash GearBest. That's right. Happy shopping. Hey, everybody. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Nice to have you here. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, Shell, you do you do a fair bit of graphic design, eh? Mm. Yeah? Yep. Like a fair bit. Yeah. Uh, Nine to five. <laughs> Nine to five. Monday to Friday. Nine it's to five. a good shift. Good shift. Yeah. Uh, I came across this really cool tool that, uh, you know, I think this is pretty intriguing, and you can, you can tell me what you think of it. Let's bring up our web browser, and I'm just going to actually head on over to this website. It's called Colorize. And... Mm-hmm. You know, have you ever been designing a website or creating a, a graphic design for somebody, and you're you're trying to think, okay, what colors would really mm-hmm. complement this, or you know, what what would work really well with this color scheme? Right, yeah. So, Colorize is a pretty cool tool that let's bring it up. But what it does, Shelley, is it it goes out on the internet Mm -hmm. instantaneously, finds a bunch of images for what it is that you're searching for. So if I'm searching for beach, for example, Mm -hmm. it grabs 10 images, the first 10 images that come up in a Google image search or however Mm -hmm. it works. I don't know under the hood how it works, but, and it figures out what is the number one color across all of these images. Wow. So if I search for beach, I would expect yeah. it's going to be maybe a little bit of a brown for sand or possibly blue for the water, depending maybe on what it blue. finds. Yeah. So let's let's give it a try and see how accurate this thing is. So in your browser, all we need to go is alexbeals.com, and it's spelled just like that. Let's see if we can get there. All right. And let's see if he's got it right there. Colorize. There it is. And I do that just to show you a quick way to get there. But there's the full URL if you want to go there. AlexBeals.com slash portfolio slash colorize. And Alex put this thing together. It's pretty cool. All right. So let's uh, let's bring it up. Uh, the link to the actual tool. Follow this link if you want to try the site. This will give you the final, there it is, slash projects, slash colorize. Okay, so here we go. So what colorize does is it goes out, grabs all those images, figures out what the top color is for those images, and then gives it to you in hexadecimal format. Shell, what's uh, what's a good object or something? You want to try the beach idea? Yeah. So I'm going to type in beach in the search up at the top. And there you go. You were right. It's like blue. I like that blue. That is kind of nice. But it's a blue that you may not have thought of. To use if you were using just your your swatch, right? It's kind of a nice, yeah, 8CA8B3. Might not have thought of that. Uh, What's another one? Let's try sand. There you go. So just a search for sand, and there there it is. Um, Italy. Italy. So what color is Italy? Oh, great. It's like gray. So you know what? It makes me think, hey, would it be like a bunch of buildings that were were shown? Uh, What's it? Sky. There you go. That does look like a good sky. That is a really good sky color. Mm -hmm. But I may not have gone with 6C99C6. 
So needless to say, that's kind of a fun little tool. That is called neat. Color Eyes, and uh, the URL is there for you. And that is just a quick little way to grab some colors. Yeah. I like idea starters. I like things that get me kind of creatively going. Really? Yeah. yeah, because sometimes it's tough, and you just want to find that right color. Mm-hmm. And that's a fun way to do it. I thought it was a clever project. I think it's really neat how, how he's he put that together. Did he create this himself? Yeah, he created it. It's freely available on GitHub. Wow. Uh, you can follow the links on the site, and that's pretty cool. It's alexbeals.com, B-E-A-L-S. Doing cool things. And I think that's exactly it. They do cool things. And here we are. And here we are in 2016, and there's still people coming up with neat ideas. Love cool that. stuff that, hey, let's just build this thing and it's so simple yet so I cool know where to begin i don't just know go to cooler for that stuff i would just bring up my color swatch and just drag around until i find a blue i like or just, yeah or it's your never book, that your pantone cool book whatever you got yeah because i got a pantone <laughs> book let me just look around here there might be an app for that i'm sure there is, there is. i'm sure there is this is Category 5 Technology TV, and hey, let us know what colors you come up with. Mm. Your favorite hexadecimal colors on Colorize. What's your favorite hexadecimal color? My favorite hexadecimal color is Fire Truck FF0000. No, is not really. Color? Yeah, that's red. Mine's F3, F3, F3. That would be like an off white. Yes. See, I can actually read hexadecimals, so. Crazy. Yeah, give me another one. All right. Capital E, lowercase e, D, 3, D, F. That's like a gray. <laughs> kind of. Uh, like a, uh, like it's a like bluish a gray. gray. Yeah. 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 Huh. How does he do it? How does he do it? I know. But I still like color eyes. Oh, I know, right? All right. So we're going to take a look at these cool cables. Have you ever broken a USB cable? Yes. I have a friend. Let me tell you a story. I have a friend who uh, had their printer up above their computer in a hutch. Yeah. They had the USB cable going up behind the hutch into the back of the printer. Okay. And one day they're jostling things around. I don't know. Maybe they had a paper jam, let's just say, right, for the sake of the story because it works. It works in the context of the story. And so he's jostling it around, and, and little did he know that he's kind of tugging on it on the back of the computer and so on, and it, and it broke the cable at where it goes into the computer. Yeah. And then he put it back and everything, and he's using it away. And, and then his printer wasn't working right after that, and he's trying to figure out what, what's going on. Yeah. Then his USB port stopped working because there might have been a short circuit or something in the cable. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Mm -hmm. So it actually damaged his computer's motherboard. The USB port got damaged. Warped it out. Just a bad scenario of, hey, when you got a cable that is, you know, frayed or broken, it can actually cause some damage to your stuff. Uh, My nightmare scenario is I always end up with a a bag or a box full of USB cables intertangled with all different power cables and stuff, and they're hard to untangle. Mm -hmm. And usually I end up fraying them while I'm trying to untangle them. Right. In walks Fuse Chicken. Sounds like a YouTube channel of sorts. But no, they build the best, the most rugged USB cables in the world. They're called Titan. And you cannot break these. Your dog cannot chew through these. Your children cannot damage <laughs> these. This is, this is what I'm talking about, folks. Okay, let's this bring up, unique. let's get the Titan M in here. These are, like I say, the most rugged incredible usb cables in the world i've got a couple of uh micro usbs here because i'm a a, an android guy Mm. here we go thank you in every language that you can think of why you're welcome i was going to try it in a different language and i don't know how to say you're welcome in any other language i just realized that there you go so this has two layers of nice hard steel and yet it is still fully malleable wow there you go try your best to tangle that this is the titan m that we're looking at right here this is a nice long one it is a little bit heavy um and that's good just try to tangle it right you can go to cat5.tv slash titan to pick up these now okay untangled just like that You, you just couldn't break it if you tried you could, you could hang your stuff from that. <laughs> Would you make it a noose over there? Uh, I wouldn't recommend murder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but these are fantastic. Okay, let's get a look at this. I like this okay. because this one you can stick on your, your backpack. You can stick this on your oh, keychain. 
This one is called the Titan Loop M. Perfect for mobile. And there it is. And it kind of goes right into this little holder here. So you can put that on your keychain and then stick that in there. And you always have this nice rugged USB cable with you. Yeah, this is a bit much to put on your belt loop. You could use that as a belt. (laughs) And your your pants would never fall down. (laughs) So there you have it. So as I was saying, it's got two layers of steel. You're not going to break that cable. That's awfully strong, and yet there's no, there's nothing to it. It actually, like, it's, it's like just a magic string. It's magic. They've actually used magic to put these together because you can see, <laughs> you can see how malleable it is. It's not. I would have expected this to be really like hard to yeah. to yeah, bend, bend but, but no, it feels just like a a cable with a steel coating on it. But it's very very strong. Uh, it's Fuse Chickens Titan USB cables. Again, cat5.tv slash Titan. They are human proof. They are not Shelly proof. <laughs> they actually are. But my camera is not Shelly proof, oh, which dear. is sitting right there. <laughs> uh, y- you never have to deal with frayed cables again uh, or the tied up knots. And uh, they are the last charging cable that you are ever going to need. And you can get them at cat5.tv slash Titan. What do you think of that? Titan. Titan. I love them. Come on. Matter C. That's thank you. But how do you say you're welcome? Oh, I thought you said thank you. Oh, well, I can I can read. Danke. Grazie. Welcome. Do you messy? How do you say welcome in French? I don't know. We're Canadian. We should know this. Merci. Uh, How do you say you're welcome? Folks, help me out. <laughs> Dude, I'm terrible, aren't I? Four years I know. We got nothing. I know. That's what do we get here in Canada? These are cool. They I love are them. Neat. I love them. Cat5. Dot TV slash Titan. Titan. Never need another USB cable. I love them. Unless you want more. <laughs> at which point you can buy more. Buy lots of them. And as I say, these are the micro USB, but you can get other kinds as well. Mm-hmm. So they do have Apple cables and things like that. Cool. Wicked. Well, folks, this is Category 5 Technology TV, and I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Shelly De Silva over here. Do you feel ready to tackle that teleprompter? You, you can't even <laughs> wave without hurting yourself. <laughs> this desk is very rigid. Yeah. Well, uh, you've never used the teleprompter before. No. So today is a big day for this you. This is rather fun. This is kind of exciting. So I'm here to bail you out if you need a hand, but Bear hey, I think you're going to do just fine. Uh, those of you, again, watching on 360 View can see the teleprompter in front of Shelly, uh, just behind you there. It's kind of cool. That is neat. Yeah. So... Hey, stick around after the news tonight. We are going to be looking at converting raw images. I've got my Nikon D5100 on hand. We've taken a couple of pictures. We surprised Shelly as she was coming in the door. And we're going to learn how to convert those raw images to a format that anyone can enjoy. Share them over email and things like that. So Mm -hmm. stick around. In the meantime, over to the newsroom. Here is Shelly De Silva. It's Tuesday, September 20th, 2016, and here are the stories we're covering. The launch date of the new Star Trek TV show has been announced, and we'll have the info for you coming up. T-Mobile is urgently warning iPhone users not to upgrade to the new iOS 10. A safe mode exploit in Microsoft Windows lets a hacker gain access to your network, and Microsoft will likely not be fixing it. For the first time ever, a video game YouTuber has been charged for promoting in-game gambling. Eee, that's rough. And someone has built the tiniest main cabinet in the galaxy. This big? These stories are coming up right after. Don't go anywhere. (laughs) I love it. Jeff Weston. Yaman. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? You're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, 
you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. The new Star Trek television series called Star Trek Discovery has had its launch date bumped back a couple... See, it doesn't work. In May of next year. It was announced Wednesday afternoon by CBC all access the new premiere date is driven by the creative team behalf that this will give the show appropriate time for delivery of the highest quality premium edition of the first new Star Trek television series in more than a decade executive producers Alex Gertman and Brian Fuller said in a joint statement bringing Star Trek back to television carries responsibility and a mission to connect fans and newcomers alike to the series that has fed our imagination since childhood we aim to dream big and deliver that means that means making sure the demands of physical and post-production for a show that takes place entirely in space and the needs to meet the air date don't result in a compromised quality before heading into production. We evaluate these realities with our partners at CBS and they agree Star Trek deserves the very best. These extra few months will help us achieve a vision that can be that we can all be proud of. Star Trek Discovery is coming to CBS All Access in May 2017 following the premiere of the CBS Television Network and will be distributed concurrently on Netflix in 188 countries and through the Bell Media in Canada. Don't... Wait, you've got it paused. <laughs> You're getting the hang of it. Yeah. The, that teleprompter is crazy. Good speed? Yeah, decent. Okay. Back to you. Do not install. Yep. Do not install. Wait, I'm going to Do not install Apple's new iOS 10 on your iPhone 6, 6 Plus, or SE warns T-Mobile US, or you'll mess up your connectivity. On Thursday, the American cell network blasted out its text to its subscribers, urging them to hold off on upgrading. And it's tweeted publicly to raise the, al the alarm, telling people to stay away from the software. This is because some iPhones running iOS 10 can't maintain stable links to the cellular network, causing calls to drop and the mobile internet connection to flake out. If you've put the new code on your headset and you've effect been affected by the signal problems that can turn, you turn a thing on and off as a temporary fix. Alternately, switching in and out of plane modes may also work. T-Mobile is firmly blaming Apple for the issue, even though it's been suggested that T-Mobile's carrier software update is causing the problem. A customer rep said it's iOS 10 issue and Apple is working on fixing the problem. We hope to have that fixed very soon. Security research to Tron name has cooked an attack that views Windows 10 safe mode to help hackers steal logins. E the CyberArk man says remote attackers need to have access to a PC before they can spring this trap, which involves rebooting a machine into safe mode to take advantage of the lesser security controls offered in that environment. Once in safe mode, logins can be stolen and otherwise with defeated past the harsh lateral techniques can be used to compromise other network machines. A fake login screen can be shown using the COM object techniques to nip Manipulate and manual. Uh, eliminate the Elim uh, eliminate boot and cloak safe mode using then types in their credential. Assuming normal reboot will hand their logins to attackers. Name says once attackers break through the parameter and gain local administrator privileges on an infected Windows based machine, they can remotely activate safe mode to bypass and manipulate endpoint security measures. In safe mode, the attackers are able to run freely run free tools to harvest credentials and lateral movements to connectivity system all while remaining undetected. This exploit can also work in Windows 10 despite the presence of the Microsoft Virtual Security Module. 
Apparently, Microsoft will not fix the attack vector since it depends on hackers already having access to a Windows machine. Two wow. men have... Can we just take take a, uh, a quick moment there? So what, what Shelly's talking about is th um, that hackers are able to get into your system on Microsoft Windows if they've first gained access to it. And Microsoft's not going to fix it because they're saying, well, they have to have access to the system. But that's where all these phishing scams, mm -hmm. to me, make, you know, that gets kind of scary because you think about the folks that fall for the phone call that says, hey, I'm Microsoft and we're, we've detected a problem on your computer. Can we need mm -hmm. to remote in and gain access to your system to fix it for you. Well, Microsoft has to admit that this is a problem and that uh, the phishing scams are a real thing. Mm -hmm. But not only that, uh, we've talked in the past about um, people installing modems, routers. Uh, you get a new modem from your ISP for your internet service, okay. and it's got all the default passwords set up. And unless you manually change those, they other can people can gain access. Yeah, and Yikes. if they've got access, they mm -hmm. can get into your Windows machine. And Microsoft says, that the, or at least the theory is, is mm -hmm. that Microsoft will not fix it because it's not a problem outside yeah. of someone having actual access to the computer. Well, it starts with that initial access. So where does it begin? So it's it's all about secure, you know, make sure that you're safe by being careful. Mm -hmm. If you get those calls, if you get those phishing scam emails, don't click on them. Don't don't take the call. Okay. Back to you, Shell. Who is this guy? Uh, well, he, this guy appeared in court. And Charged was... offenses under the Gambling Act in what is believed to be the first prosecution involving betting on video games. Wow. Craig Douglas and Dylan Rugby, who are both from Essex, are charged with promoting a lottery and advertising unlawful gambling. Mr. Douglas makes gaming videos on YouTube under the sun, pseudo, pseudonym. Pseudonym. Nepenthes. Yeah, Nepenthes. Nepenthes. There we go. We'll say. He is also charged with inviting children to gamble. Ooh. Yikes. The two men appeared at Birmingham Magistrates Court. The case has been adjourned until October 14th. The Gambling Commission, which brought the prosecution, has been looking into the rise of video game gambling. It is warning parents that children can be drawn into betting so-called skin virtual goods, such as weapons or clothes, that are features of many of these popular games. It has been estimated that the global market in betting on video games is worth as much as four, four billion pounds? Billion euros. I don't know. Pounds. Behold the tiniest MAME cabinet in the galaxy. The what? world of MAME cabinetry. Cab cabinetry? Essentially, a subculture of arcade lovers who build amazing cabinets for their emulators. The goal is usually to either create, recreate the arcade games, or build something really wild. Adafruit built something really wild. Originally a weekend project, this main cabinet is a few inches tall and uses a screen about as big as a thumbnail. Wow. <laughs> the kit is <laughs> far from complete, and the screen too small to really be usable for most games. However, with a little downsampling and some judis judicious? judicious, nice word. Sorry about that. Game choices. You can play some Pac-Man or Dig Duck, uh, Dig Dug in this minuscule machine. The cabinet uses 0.96 inches or gigabytes old OLED display and a Raspberry Pi Zero. Oh, this is great. The creator, Philip Burgess, uses a tool called NanoScreen to downsample and display the game frames on the tiny, tiny screen. Big thanks this week to Jeff Weston, Roy W. Nash, and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us. If you found a news story you'd like to send, email it to newsroom at category5.tv. For all our tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit the category5.tv newsroom at newsroom.category5.tv. For the category 5 for the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Shelley De Silva. Thanks, Shelley. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Hi, I'm Shelley. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> My voice cracked. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fine. That's fine. Category 5.TV is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it is here. Cat5.TV slash TPN and the International Association of the Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. 
want to say hi to our chat room. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, don't forget, really cool way that you can support Category 5 Technology TV and our slew of growing shows is to head on over to cat5.tv slash Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And for just 25 cents an episode, you can be supporting Category 5 Technology TV. And uh, it's a great way to, uh, to get some extra content, too. I'm trying yeah. to put up some more behind-the-scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. That's where our 360 camera rig comes in tonight. Uh, we're doing some test runs uh, for next week's special. And so those yep. who are on Patreon, if everything went well, mm -hmm. I'm assuming it is. The cameras are rolling. So uh, you're going to get some behind-the-scenes there. So get on over to cat5.tv slash Patreon to support us in that way. It helps us so mm -hmm. very much. Tonight, uh, we are going to be converting raw images, and uh, I guess, you know, it boils down to, hey, what is raw image, right? Really big what is file. raw? Really big files, but why do we take raw images with our camera? Do you know? For billboards and stuff? Mm, yeah. I mean, it's full resolution, right? It's huge. The, the thing is, is when you take a picture with your digital camera, and it, if it saves as a JPEG, okay, your camera gets all the data off of the image sensor, and then it has to go through some processing to now compress it into a JPEG image and save it to the disk. So all of that image data mm -hmm. is compressed to JPEG and converted and it guesses at the exposure and the light and the white balance and all these kinds of things, the frequency of your lighting and, and all that, and then saves the JPEG and it's done and done. And it discards everything else. Uh -huh. So all of the remaining data is discarded. Shooting in RAW, what it does is it takes all that image data from the sensor, so what the camera actually sees, mm -hmm. and dumps it to the disk. It's RAW. It has like not so been touched. Yeah, it's, that's why it's so big. It has everything. Mm -hmm. So if your JPEG might be overexposed because there's a lot of light, the RAW image, you can bring down the light, mm -hmm. and it does not affect the quality of the image. Unlike a JPEG, if you brought down the light, you'd have trouble getting contrast. Mm -hmm. And so RAW is the way to go if you want to shoot stuff for high quality because you can always manipulate it later. It's mm -hmm. the RAW dump from the image sensor. It's also very, very fast because of the fact that there's no processing going on oh. or little processing going on. So you can shoot picture after picture after picture, mm -hmm. but it takes up a lot of space. The other problem, if you will, other than space being a problem, if you if you can consider that, I mean, I've got a 100 and yeah, Kingston has put a, a 128 gig SD card in our camera, so who cares if there's a 30 meg file, right? Yeah. Uh, but beyond space, uh, where does that really matter? Space is when you're trying to email it to somebody, yeah. but beyond that, they can't open it. There's quite a good chance that your friends that you're emailing it to, or if you're emailing an image to mom or dad, mm. pretty good chance they don't know how to work with a raw image. Because remember, it's not that compressed JPEG or Ping or TIFF or something that you can just open and, and it just opens. Mm. Um, it is a raw data dump from the camera sensor. So you need to use special software to open it and view it and then, you know, it, it's a pain in the butt for people. They probably won't know how to open it. Mm. So that said, it'd be nice to be able to send all of those images to mom and dad, but to have to bring them up into Darktable, to have to convert them to JPEG manually, yeah. which is fine if, like, if you were doing this professionally and you're, you know, I've shot a wedding and I'm going to put up a, a bunch of, you know, I'm going to send them the final pictures. Right. Probably not as raw. They'll probably want JPEG that they can just take to a, a printer. Yeah, just get it. You know, you plug it into the Kodak machine and it just prints. They're not mm -hmm. going to take raw files on that. So um, they, they'll want the JPEG. So that's when I'll get into that process. But tonight, what we're going to learn to do is just take all those raw images and just dump them to JPEG. Okay. We're going to auto calculate exposures. We're going to do all the stuff that the cameras. Uh, system would normally do to okay. save as a JPEG, but we're going to do it on our Linux computer. And we're going to do that through the terminal. So by knowing how to do this on Linux, we're going to be able to shoot with raw mode on our DSLRs. And, you know, if you've got any kind of a DSLR, look for the setting to save as RAW, or on Nikon, it's an NEF. Uh, it's a CR2 on a Canon uh, right. camera. So you can save directly to that RAW image, and it's going to give you all that sensor data. Okay, so just before the show, Shell, I mentioned uh, I, I snapped some pictures in RAW format on our Nikon camera here. So you can see here's what they look like Any, uh, in Darktable. Neat. Right, so this is Darktable, which your parents probably don't have. 
these are NEF raw files, so these are right off of the camera. There's, there's the surprise on your face when, when you walked in the door. I was literally just standing there waiting to snap your picture. <laughs> okay, so the, you can see this is in Darktable, and I can manipulate these with Darktable. We've shown this on the show. Um, you can check that out. Do a search for Darktable on our website, category5.tv, if you want to learn how to use it. But tonight, we're just, we want to we want to share these with our family and friends. We want to be able to put them up on Facebook and whatever else directly. So let's bring up our terminal. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to install a nice little tool that's going to allow us to do this in batch mode. It's called UF raw batch. So we're going to go sudo. Well, no, I'm on Debian, so I'm not going to use sudo, but you might be using sudo. I'm going to actually become super user. No, I'm not on Debian. <laughs> I'm so used to being on Debian. I'm on point Linux, sudo apt-get update, and then enter my password. It's going to update from my repositories. There you go. So what this is doing is going out on the web and saying, OK, what are the latest versions of all the programs that are currently available for Linux? And it's telling my computer that information so that when I install any program, I'm going to get the brand new latest and greatest according to the repositories. This is telling me that some of the repositories that I have in my list are no longer available. When I see errors like that, that's probably because of the fact that I'm on an old version of Point Linux. It's deprecated, and I need to upgrade. So you'll see soon, we're going to probably have Ubuntu Mate on here, Mate, sudo apt-get install. Uh, and we're going to install this program called ufraw-batch, just like that, and run that through the install. You'll see I already have this installed, probably because uh, we've done some demos in the past with uh, raw imaging, probably using the GIMP, so uh, we use that tool already. So I'm going to jump over to where my raw files are stored right now. I've already dragged them onto my desktop. There we go. So there are all my NEF images, which again, my uh, Windows using friends are maybe not going to be able to open those. Mac using friends, I'm not sure. Can you open those directly? Can you open raw files directly on a Mac uh, without Photoshop? I haven't tried. I haven't tried, so... I'm not too sure on that. Yeah, but you sure. know what? JPEG or Ping are so easy to use. You can't put a raw image up on the on a website. Mm -mm. You need to have it converted to a JPEG or a Ping, depending on, uh, on the format. So how do we choose whether we want JPEG or Ping? JPEG is photography, photos, pictures, generally speaking. Ping are lossless. So Ping are great for things like screenshots or if you need an, <clears throat> if you need an alpha layer, if you need okay. to have a transparent layer so that you can cut someone out of a photo, then it needs to be saved as a ping. But generally, because it's lossless, screenshots are great as pings. Pictures are going to work fairly well as JPEGs, but it is lossy, so you, you lose a little bit of quality. Whether you can tell that or not is, uh, is the question. Okay, so we're going to convert all of these in one fell swoop. You saw when I started opening, well, you saw when I started opening them in Darktable, how I would have had to go through and, yeah. cha and change each image and save it. We're going to actually use that program that we just installed, and we're going to start with something really, really simple. I'm in the folder with all of my files, which are, let's look at the file size, 16 mega piece. See that? So we're going to convert those down to JPEG, just as a, a quick little demo. So we're going to go UF raw dash batch and then we're going to go dash dash out dash type <clears throat> space and we're going to do jpeg this time around and then space and i'm not going to go one by one i'm going to say asterisk for everything called dot nef and notice it's case sensitive so i can't use dot nef i need to be observant of the case so now when i hit enter it's going through that folder kablam saved, open, saved. And it's going to go through all 35 of those images and convert them to JPEG. So now you notice that now I'm getting thumbnails because even Nautilus here knows how to work with JPEGs, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't know how to read an NEF file. So there's my JPEG. Sweet. How big is that JPEG? It is only one megabyte. So it is one sixteenth of the size with just the default settings, but you see that it is full resolution, it's full quality. Nice Starfleet uniform sitting on there. <laughs> There's our uh, 360 cam rig. Neat. There it is. That's what it looks like there. And uh, there's our teleprompter that Shelly was reading, and that you can see the cam rig on the right hand side there. So that's what we're looking into right now. 
cool. So there you have it. It's going through and converting all those to JPEG from RAW. And it does a fairly swell job of that. But that is just, I've just said, hey, take all these NEF files, convert them to JPEG, and just do your thing. Do your thing. Right? So that's where you're saying, hey, I trust you to do what you need to do, and I'll just let you do it. <laughs> yep. Because we're just doing this to share them with mom or dad. But those files are still pretty big. So a meg each. Yeah. I can only attach maybe five or six yeah. of them before something like a local ISP might bounce them back because it's over five megs. A lot of ISPs, places like Gmail and stuff, mm -hmm. are going to accept anything up to about 25 megs, but oh, really? that's like 25 images, yeah. and then you're done, right? Mm -hmm. Or one raw image, <laughs> right? So, nothing else. So let's instead, okay, now I'm going to cancel this with Control-C, and we can see that, yeah, our JPEGs are all there. There you go. And you'll see, notice how dark that is? Because the raw image is, uh, is all the data. So if I brought that up into Darktable, I could actually improve that quite a bit. See the difference? Oh. Right, out of the, right out of the gate, it's, it's better. And I could go through. And again, we're not going to get into Darktable usage tonight. But uh, OK, so let's, let's uh, remove all of our JPEG images and let's try another example. <laughs> there we go. So now we're back to just having, <clears throat> that's a script created by Darktable. We're just having uh, the NEF file. So let's get into a more sophisticated way of doing things. First of all, I'm going to show you something here. With that UF raw dash batch type dash dash help, and that gives you a nice little output that shows you a lot of the different features that this thing is capable of. Oh. We're talking some cool stuff like being able to set the temperature of your lighting. Oh. And we're not talking like 36 degrees. We're talking the color temperature in Kelvin. So here at the studio, for example, we're at 6,000 Kelvin because we're sitting under sunlight here. So these lights are special sunlight lights so that we don't have to have lighting all around us. Yeah. We've got it in, in our ceiling. Oh. So in a studio, you're probably looking anywhere from 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin. Mm -hmm. At an office, you're probably looking about 3,500 Kelvin. Wow. And uh, at home, you might be a little bit lower than that, 2,400 to, to 3,000 or so, depending on whether you're using incandescence or fluorescence. So, so by setting, it, once you know how many Kelvin, like what the temperature of your lighting is you can really tweak the the it's basically affects the white balance oh. because then it knows the the frequency of the lighting itself and can adapt for things like and, like and white. do you manually do that you can actually just specify it in the command line oh. so dash dash temperature equals 6000 for here at studio d oh, okay. right so let's uh, let's try it and you can go through all that that big long list of different features that are available for you it's pretty uh, vast and sophisticated you can do cropping and image sizing let's do a couple of things so let's do uf raw dash batch and then let's get into something like okay first of all out type JPEG, and I mentioned that we're trusting that it's doing all the compression and everything, but let's actually set the compression level. Compression equals, and you notice it wrapped, but it is compression equals, and the default is 85, I believe, but you can set it to 80 or 60 or 90 if you want it to be perfect quality, 99 or 100. Compression is a little bit of a deceiving word because you think 85% compression means it's very highly compressed. 85% actually means 85% quality. So oh. only 15% compression versus, uh, you know, compression 60 means that there is actually 40% compression. So 60 is much less quality than 85. So you find that happy medium, but because we're sending this by email mm -hmm. for mom, mom and pop, we're just going to set the compression to, say, 60. Let's make it really low quality. Why not? Because we're just talking about really, really small mm -hmm. images, OK? Then we're going to go temperature equals 6,000, because we know that that's the color temperature of our lighting here at Studio D. And let's actually shrink them down. So dash dash size equals, and then we're going to go with comma height. So And that's, those are maximums. So you don't have to actually specify the actual dimensions. You can just say 1,000 comma 1,000, and it will never be wider or taller than 1,000. But it will keep the proportions. Yeah. So it also works as a scaler as well. So let's do that. Let's say 900 comma 900. And those are now our maximums. So that is perfect. OK, so then the final thing is um, our actual file type. So star.nef. And then um, I'll just let it save to the current folder by just leaving the default. But I could, if I wanted to, I could set the out path 
equals, and then I can set home slash whatever. But let's just mm. let it output to the current folder. And if I did everything right, here we go. It's creating those JPEGs. And you so see what it's doing? It's doing a lot faster this time because it's working with smaller images and smaller quality. Cannot downsize from 0 to 900. I'm not sure what that one is. I must have done something a little off. But OK, so let's take a look. Now, see the, how it's green? So my color temperature is, in fact, off ever so slightly. So let's try 5,000 uh, star.jpg. So let's try changing my color temperature to 5,000 and see if that gets it a little closer. Still giving us a green image. Mm -hmm. So I may be off on my lights. Or maybe, my, you know what, my... No, because those are raw images. Uh, maybe I didn't... Uh, set the camera exposure correctly, but it's raw. Needless to say, I need to look at the light bulbs and make sure that we're running. <laughs> Maybe I'm 4,000 cal. No, I've got to be at least 5,500 here. No, yeah. But they're, they're aged bulbs. We've been here for two years and I've never changed them. So, okay. So let's see just with the default. Okay. So it detects the color frequency a lot better than I can. And there you go. So now you see that that image is 900 by 51, uh, by, pardon me, 900 by 591, much, much smaller. At full resolution, there it is. My shirt there, that's full resolution. Okay, and the file size for sharing on the web is only 33.6 kilobytes. Whoa. Okay, so now I can include way more images. They're still good quality, at that size, at that scale, but we're not printing them, we're not doing anything like that. It's strictly for display. And there is Shelly surprised to see me. So there you have it. There's the quick nerdy, uh, nerdy, <laughs> dirty. I just made up a term, nerdy, dirty. Uh, there's the nerdy, dirty way to convert your raw images. Again, works with Nikon NEF format as well as CR2s from a Canon camera. And that will allow you to convert everything to JPEG ping. Uh, remember when I set uh, dash dash out type space JPEG? I could have done ping. I could have done TIFF. Oh, there are a few other the options extensions. there. Yeah, and that will automatically uh, affect the output so that you get the kind of file format that you're looking for. So that's really all there is to that, folks. Enjoy, and you're welcome. The nerdy dirty. Yeah, I like that one. That's our t-shirt for the week. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, this has been Season 9. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it's over? And you're here all throughout Season 10. Crazy. That's cool. So we've got a really great team this, uh, this coming year. We've got uh, Jeff Weston, yourself, Shelly De Silva, myself, Robbie Ferguson, and Sasha Dermatis. Beautiful. Bam. And, uh, of course, uh, we've, we've got other people that are on standby, like uh, Hillary Rumble, who is on maternity, le maternity leave. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking forward to having her back sometime oh, yeah. throughout Season 10. And it's going to be a really fun year. And uh, don't miss next week. Next Tuesday night is going to be the, it's gonna be the nerdy dirty of all episodes. Uh, we have that 360 view. So make sure you join us. Get your headset at cat5.tv slash cardboard. And these really are astonishingly awesome and they're comfortable so check them out cat5.tv slash cardboard to get one of those thank you to everyone who's been purchasing things off of our website and, and through our yes, partner links it you. makes such a difference and thanks for supporting category 5 for the past n uh, 9 seasons and here we go with season 10 so we've got uh, our work cut out for us over the next week as mm -hmm. we prepare and I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing you again next Tuesday night as we kick things off so don't miss it have your Skype video ready. Yeah. Shelly, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. And thanks to you for being here. Have a great night, and we'll see you next Tuesday night. Bye-bye.